This is Valley View News. We got video of the explosion as it happened, uh, and there it is. Two bombs exploded at the Boston Marathon, immediately killing two and injuring dozens. Los Angeles police are cracking down on the growing issue of distracted drivers. I usually try to not buy it if I don't have to. And many CSUN students and others may be spending less on textbooks next year. Hello, welcome to Valley View News. I'm Fanny Cano. And I'm Wendy Aguilar. We begin our newscast with a developing story from Boston. Police say two bombs exploded within 15 seconds of one another at the finish line of a Boston Marathon. Two people were killed immediately and a third died later. More than 130 injured, some critically. Valley View News reporter Lita Alekani has been following the events as they continue to unfold. She joins us from the newsroom. Thank you, Wendy. Police have confirmed the explosions were in fact bombs. They were placed inside trash cans along the sidewalk at the finish line of the famous race. The Boston Police Bomb Squad discovered another bomb nearby and was able to safely dismantle it. The blast took place roughly an hour after the marathon's first runners crossed the finish line. A brief video shows the initial blast that went through the stands of onlookers and several runners can be seen falling to the ground. Boston Police Commissioner Edward Davis says the second explosion took place moments later. These explosions occurred 50 to 100 yards apart and uh, each scene uh, resulted in multiple uh, casualties. It is reported that there are children with severe burns and some people with severed limbs. A hospital spokesman says this is like something that would happen in a war zone. President Obama says it is unclear what the motive is. And we will find out who did this. We'll find out why they did this. Any, respons uh, any responsible individuals, any responsible groups will feel the full weight of justice. Police say a surveillance photo shows a man carrying a couple of backpacks into the area before the explosions, but no arrests have been made. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick urged people to stay off the streets. We are asking that people um, uh, stay out of crowds and calmly uh, make their way home or if they're uh, visiting back to their hotels. A third reported explosion at the JFK library turned out to be false. It was instead a mechanical fire not related to the bombs. The Pentagon is sending aircraft to cover Boston and security has been increased across the nation. Again, there are three reported deaths and more than 130 others who are injured. Officials say they expect that number to rise. We will continue to bring you the latest updates as we get them. In the newsroom, I'm Lita Ali Khani. Back to you, Wendy. Free meningitis vaccines will be offered this week after the death of a West Hollywood lawyer. 33-year-old Brad Saad died from meningitis after attending a white party. A yearly gathering of gay men in Palm Springs, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation is prepared to give out nearly 10,000 doses. The free vaccines are being offered in response to an outbreak of meningitis in New York, where several men have died. Meningitis can be treated if caught quickly. Symptoms include fever, headache, and sensitivity to light. The amount of money students owe in the U.S. is reaching a new high, nearly $1 trillion. The average college student in California owes $19,000 in debt. Valley View News reporter Alexa Fung has more on how students might be able to save some money. The average college student spends nearly $700 a year on textbooks. A newly proposed bill is looking to ease the financial burden on students. Two semesters ago, I spent close to $600. I'd say about close to $500. So close to $300. This is what some CSUN students are paying every semester for textbooks. Probably like $650. 600 my first year here. When asked if they have ever not bought a textbook because it was too expensive, most students said... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I usually try to not buy it if I don't have to. A study from the U.S. Government Accountability Office shows that 7 out of 10 students do not buy textbooks because it is too expensive. In the last 20 years, textbook prices have tripled. CSUN psychology major Jacqueline Junker says she struggles to pay for her textbooks. Um, I've had to take out more loans for textbooks, yeah. I've, had, I've gotten to the point where the job doesn't suffice for paying for the textbooks. California Assemblyman Tim Donnelly has introduced a Textbook Tax Relief Act, which would exempt textbooks from a state sales tax. Matador Bookstore Assistant Director John Acero says he is unsure whether it would have a significant impact on students. 
That's hard to predict. We know students go without textbooks due to cost. That's why we create things like Rent-A-Text used in digital textbooks. I think it would have some impact. I don't know how measurable that would be, though. The bill is currently being under review. If it passes, students in California will no longer be paying a sales tax on their textbooks starting January 1, 2014. Junker says she hopes the bill passes. I definitely think it'll, it would make a difference in my education because I wouldn't have to worry about money so much. Education is already really expensive and adding on all of these extra taxes and all of these extra like costs for textbooks and everything else um, makes it harder. Students interested in supporting the bill can sign a petition online at Tim Donnelly's website. Back to you. The number of accidents caused by distracted drivers continues to rise across the country. This even though April is Distracted Driver Awareness Month. Valley View's Jonathan Gonzalez takes a look at what Los Angeles is doing to crack down on the problem. You pull out of the drive through and go straight for those fries, or you hear the phone ring and go to answer it. Los Angeles Police Detective Bill Busto says a department is joining the national crackdown on distracted driving. We also looked at a period of three recent years and we noticed that there were approximately 6,200 traffic collisions with the primary cause being the distracted driving. 15 people died and 3,500 more were injured in those collisions. Studies show using your phone behind the wheel can be just as dangerous as driving drunk. Similarly to uh, DUI, everything slows down, that thought process and, and reaction time. A first offense for using your phone behind the wheel will cost you $170. And although many people know the dangers, several CSUN students we spoke to say they still use their phone while driving. To be honest, I do text and drive. I you know, like, like every other person, like they change music while driving too, like it happens. I used to text while driving and then I was in traffic and got into a fender bender because of it. I will admit that occasionally if it's a red light, I will, I, I usually don't send a text message because it takes more time, but I'll, I'll read it, I'll read a text message, message at a red light or something. But a couple of CSUN bicyclists say they know the dangers of distracted driving all too well and they've got a message for drivers. Be conscious about it. Uh, it's not just you're not the only one on the road. Like, what's what's that text to you? You know, like, is it really important? Sometimes it's either property damage or it could be a life. Reporting for Valley View News, I'm Jonathan Gonzalez. Toyota, Honda, and Nissan are recalling three million vehicles due to airbags catching fire. Toyota is recalling two million vehicles from 2000 to 2004, including the Corolla, Tundra, the Lexus SC. Honda is recalling one million vehicles, including Civic, CRV, and the Odyssey. Honda says the problem crept in because of two human errors during the production. The recall extends to Latin America, China, the Middle East, and Africa. No injuries have been reported. An investigation continues in Downey after a body was found next to the 105 freeway. The California Highway Patrol discovered the remains in a shallow grave near the Lakewood on-ramp. CHP notified Downey police. Police are taking the case as a homicide. The victim was not immediately identified. The painkiller hydroconon could possibly have tighter restrictions in the future. Valley View News' Julia Cook reports on the U.S. Senate bill. Hydrocodone is also sold under the brand names Vicodin, Norco, and Lortab, some of the most abused prescription drugs in the nation and a major contributor of drug-related fatalities in the U.S. Dr. Daniel Rose explains the easy accessibility of hydrocodone. These drugs are too available and the increased legislation can only help to identify people who really need to be sent to the chronic pain therapist and really need the source of their pain identified and treated better. The Safe Prescribing Act of 2013 could possibly change a hydrocodone pill from a Schedule 3 drug to a Schedule 2. And what this means is patients will have to visit their doctors to obtain a refill. If the act is legislated, then patients will be prescribed fewer doses of hydrocodone. And pharmacies would also be placed with stricter procedures as to both managing and storing the painkiller. Pharmacist Jack Smithian mentions what the bill will do and explains the difference between accessing a Schedule II drug versus a Schedule III. It will make it harder for the patient to get the medication. Um, Schedule II drugs, you're not allowed to have any refill. So if the doctor issues you a 10-day supply, 
that's it. That's your 10-day supply. You cannot get a refill unless you go to the same doctor again and you visit the doctor. Schedule three drugs right now. You could get refills up to six months. The Food and Drug Administration recommended these restrictions in January. The American Academy of Pain Medicine's president-elect Lynn Webster, however, challenged the FDA proposal in a statement saying, quote, in our view, a more effective means to address this problem would be enhanced prescriber education and adherence to principles of practice, including ongoing monitoring for aberrant behaviors and early signs of addiction. A study by the LA Times found that there were approximately 3,700 prescription drug-related fatalities in Southern California between 2006 and 2011. 945 of these fatalities were due to hydrocodone. This total is more than any other prescription drug. In Van Nuys, I'm Julia Cook, Valley View News. North Koreans celebrated the birthday of the country's first leader, Kim Il-sung. The festivities did not mention that North Korea is preparing to fire off a medium-range missile, touching off concerns around the world. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has met with leaders in Japan, South Korea and China to coordinate the response to the missile threat. The United States remains open to authentic and credible negotiations on denuclearization but the burden is on Pyongyang. The UN has extended sanctions against North Korea for ignoring the ban on the country's nuclear missile program. CSUN history professor Robert Cleave says North Korea does pose a threat to the United States. North Korea uh, seems to be determined to um, somehow conquer or take over South Korea. And of course, the United States is um, there and would immediately become involved. and. Um, it's unlikely that uh, they could do that without starting a major war. Nicolás Maduro has won the presidential election in Venezuela. He served as interim president after the death of President Hugo Chávez. Maduro gave a speech at the presidential palace calling for political unity. It was a narrow win over the Venezuelan governor, Enrique Capriles. Capriles did not admit defeat and said there were many voting irregularities. His representatives are asking for a manual recount. President-elect Maduro says he plans to reestablish relationships with the U.S., but continues to criticize the U.S. for allegedly conspiring against his country. Recent studies are questioning vitamin C's benefit for healthy women. Doctors have previously recommended the vitamin along with calcium to help prevent bone fractures. Consumer Reports magazine suggests that lead levels in 9 of 32 vitamin D supplements exceed the California limit. California law requires these vitamins to be labeled, but they were not. Prices of vitamin D supplements also vary. Trader Joe's offers the best deal at just three cents per capsule. Sundown Naturals cost eight cents per vitamin. Doctors say people who take vitamin D should stay within the recommended amounts because too many can put you at risk for kidney damage. Consumer Reports Dr. John Santa says people exposed to sunlight probably do not need to take vitamin D at all. Joshua Tree National Park became the new destination, not for hikers, but for taggers. The park's most popular hiking sports are now closed to the public. Park rangers have found graffiti spray painting on all 17 sites, including the famous rock formation and historic Native American sites. National Park officials blame the widespread of vandalism on social media sites where some vandals posted pictures of the graffiti. Park Service officials say the vandals could face up to $5,000 in fines in six months in jail. Coming up, can Dwight Howard help the Lakers recover without Kobe? And we'll tell you why Major League Baseball players are wearing the number 42. Also, we'll tell you about Justin Bieber's message about Anne Frank. So, are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Come here. 
Dad. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. We'd like to update and recap the situation in Boston where bombs exploded at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Three people are confirmed dead, two died at the scene, and one hours after the bombing occurred. Authorities say one of the casualties was an eight-year-old boy. There have been more than 130 injuries reported. Victims of this event are being treated at hospitals throughout Boston. This event has triggered the LAPD to provide extra security to high-profile locations like Dodger Stadium, public transit, and the government buildings. We will have more updates on this tragic event as they come. Here's Malcolm Hoyle with sports in Jackie Robinson's day, plus the latest on Kobe Bryant's injury. Thanks, Wendy. It took a little longer than expected, but Adam Scott has won the 2013 Masters. This is Scott's first major. Diossi sank this 20-foot putt on 18 for what he thought would be the win, but Angel Cabrera buried the same hole to force a playoff. After Cabrera missed his birdie try on the second playoff hole, Scott again had his chance for victory. With that 12-foot birdie, he took home the green foot Scott and gave Australia its first win at Augusta. Scott finished at 9-under ahead of Cabrera and Jason Day. After the win, Scott talked about what this win means for him and his country. This was one thing in golf that we hadn't been able to achieve, so uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Masters weekend was not without controversy, however. Tiger Woods was given a two-stroke penalty. Augusta National officials ruled he had an illegal drop during the second round of the Masters. Officials initially ruled the drop was legal, but after a viewer reported the violation, they took a second look and assessed the penalty. Woods was allowed to finish the tournament because of a rule change that allowed for a stroke penalty instead of disqualification. Woods says he had no idea he made an illegal drop. Despite the penalty, Tiger finished in fourth place at five under par for the tournament. For Lakers fans, their worst nightmare may have come true. Kobe Bryant has a torn Achilles tendon and is out for the rest of the season. Bryant suffered an injury at home in a win against Golden State. He is expected to be out at least six to nine months. With Bryant out, the team now turns to Dwight Howard to finish the season. The All-Star center will look to lead the team for the rest of the year and ultimately to what they hope will be a 17th championship. Major League Baseball will celebrate the anniversary of Jackie Robinson's debut as his biopic, 42, is number one at the box office. For the fifth annual Jackie Robinson Day, all players will wear Robinson's 42, a number that was retired by baseball in 1997. Yankees closer Mariano Rivera is the only active player to currently wear the number because he had the number before it was retired. Robinson broke the Major League Baseball color barrier in 1947 and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1962. And finally, CSUN has hired former Sacramento Kings coach Reggie Theus as its men's basketball coach. This is the first coaching job for Theus since being fired by the Kings in 2008. He replaces Bobby Braswell, who was fired last month after 17 seasons at CSUN. That's all for sports. Back to Wendy Aguilar and Fanny Cano. Now here's Julia Cook with the entertainment, Justin Bieber's Anne Frank Common and Coachella. But first, here's a recap of what happened at the MTV Movie Awards. Comedic actress Rebel Wilson hosted the MTV Movie Awards that honored Hollywood's biggest names. Movie of the Year went to Marvel's The Avengers, meanwhile Bradley Cooper took Best Male Performance in Silver Linings Playbook, and Jamie Foxx took the Generation Award. Jennifer Lawrence won the Best Female Performance for her role in Silver Linings Playbook, and Will Ferrell took the Comedic Genius Award. Musical guests included Selena Gomez and Macklemore. There was a big difference between two new movies at the box office last weekend. 42, a film based on Jackie Robinson, the first African-American to play Major League Baseball, took the number one spot, making over $27 million. Scary Movie 5 came in at number two, but with only $15 million. The Croods took the number three spot with $13 million, and G.I. Joe Retaliation was fourth with $10 million. 
Coachella kicked off last weekend in Indio with more than 190 bands performing on six stages. Some of the music festival's performers included the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Wu-Tang Clan, the Lumineers, and LaRue. Many celebrities attended the event, including singer Katy Perry, model Alessandra Ambrosio, actress Lucy Hale, and Twilight stars Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. Justin Bieber is part of yet another controversy. The singer visited Anne Frank's house during his tour in Europe. While at the museum, he signed the guest book with a note saying that if Frank was still alive, hopefully she would have been a believer. Neither Bieber nor his representatives have made any further comments. That's all for entertainment. Back to you, Fanny Cano and Wendy Aguilar. Coming up, graduating seniors at Cal State Northridge mentor high school journalism students. And learn why a Covina man does not want you to break his piñatas. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, I gotta finish this. Wait, you're gonna post those pictures of Mary? Yep. Do you think she's so hot? But her mom and dad will see them. Her grandmother, her little sister, everyone she knows, it's gonna kill her. Who cares? Just a couple of pictures. It's no big deal. No big deal? Don't. This has gotta stop. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. We don't win unless we work together. It's how we play our best. It's how we survive on the field. Now that same teamwork can save 13 million people affected by the famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Go to this site and forward the facts to everyone you know. The more people who know, the more money we can raise. And the more money we raise, the more people we can help. Because saving lives doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot of us. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Thank you for staying with us. Now for another update in the Boston Marathon bombing. The FBI is treating this case as an act of terror. A person believed to be involved in the bombing is in the States with a student visa. The person is being questioned by authorities and has not been formally charged or arrested. The person of interest is currently being treated at a local hospital for severe burns. Limited information is being released at this point point. The story will continue to evolve over the next hours, days, and weeks. Cal State Northridge Media Mentor's tutorial class gives journalism and high school students the opportunity to expand their future goals. Gina Hernandez has the story. Students at El Camino High School in Woodland Hills are being given the opportunity to be mentored by graduating journalism students at Cal State Northridge. I do want to hear from you. I know some of you haven't gone to sites because Media Mentors is a journalism tutorial taught by Professor Linda Bowen, where seniors go to different high school campuses in the San Fernando Valley. The seniors guide the mentees by applying what they have learned about journalism throughout their college career. Each week during the tutorial, the mentors report back to their classmates and professor. Broadcast journalism student Tina Lopez says that this class gives her the opportunity to realize what her strengths and weaknesses are. I get a lot out of helping young journalists develop their skills and figure out where it is they want to be. After six weeks of focusing on print, journalism advisor at El Camino, Kimberly Mesadaya, transitions her Journalism One class into broadcast. Uh, we start off with a Vox Pop. That just gets them used to framing their subjects and getting interviews. It's one question that's asked to a variety of people. Senior at El Camino, James Balgot, says he enjoys the transition from print to broadcast. A little, actually a little better at framing camera, so it's a lot less stress for me. Ms. Mesadaya has given the students the necessary tools to create their own project. 
Students at El Camino High School put together different packages to get feedback from their professor, other students, and media mentors. You always want to be able to have them at an angle to where they can After reviewing them, media mentor Kira McGibbon says there is room for improvement. They understand like the, that they need to have tight, medium, wide shots, but they still need a little help on their framing. Although not all of the students in the Journalism 1 class aspire to be journalists, the mentors influence them to pursue a higher education and develop skills for the real world. In Woodland Hills, I'm Gina Hernandez for Valley View News. Every month, downtown Covina holds an art walk. Anyone is welcome to come and enjoy the different types of art that is being displayed, from cartoon drawings to handmade jewelry. Valley View News reporter Vanessa Alvarez gives us a little taste of this monthly event. Ever heard of a piñata that you couldn't break? Well, come to Covina's Art Walk and you'll find just that. One Art Walk vendor, Joe Rodriguez, tells us about his unique hobby. I use tissue paper and manila folder. So it takes a few hours, but every now and then I get the itch to make something. I'll sit down and I'll start gluing and put paper to paper and that's what is made. These handmade creations are not exactly for candy, Joe says. I mean, they're really durable, they're hard to break. So I didn't want them to be broken, I wanted them to last forever because that's just me, you know, I'm like, oh, don't break them, you know. When asked if he could make a piñata specifically for the art walk, Joe had a change of heart and went with something a little more practical. You know, I just sat down and thought, I'll make a traditional star piñata. I mean, something that you could fill with candy. A happy birthday piñata is fitting since this was the art walk's one-year anniversary. No matter what the product, people of all ages can come display their creations. But some may not be so lighthearted like Ronnie Fierro's work. He says he likes to express himself through his artwork. If he's having a bad day, what he creates will reflect that. It depends on how, how I'm feeling. Like, if I feel, like, angry, I'll try to draw something a little, like, angry. Although the art walk is still fairly new, it's getting its name around, especially with the help of vendors with such interesting products. Deborah Corrales is just another example of someone who took their hobby and made it work. Her business is called Earth's Treasures. I've been doing this for 20 years. Everything's colorful and vibrant, real gemstones, and the earrings are made either paper or clay. <laughs> That's what the flowers are made out of. Every first Saturday of the month, Downtown Covina puts on their art walk of at least 50 vendors. But almost anything is welcome to be sold. All items range in price from about $5 a piece to 20 So far, each month, the art walk has increased in size. In Covina, I'm Vanessa Alvarez for Valley View News. Someone in Bruno Park is holding a Powerball ticket worth $1.3 million. The ticket matched five out of five numbers in last Saturday's draw. There were also million-dollar winners in Delaware, Indiana, New York, and Minnesota. California became the 43rd state on April 8th to join the nationwide Powerball lottery. Workers at a Sageway County Sioux in Kansas caught an unlikely incident of bullying on video. Sioux keepers say it was the Canadian geese that flew into the gorilla's habitat. And look at that. It seems like the birds really put the ape in its place. You hear about birds of prey, but that's not something you see every day. Thank you for watching this edition of Valley View News. Join us next week. Thank you and have a wonderful day.